Hello everyone, today I'm going to be talking about the molecular mechanism behind the toxicity of black widow spider venom. Black widow spiders are all part of a genus called Latrodectus, with Latrodectus mectans being the most well known. All black widows contain a neurotoxin that can potentially be lethal to humans at high enough doses. Notably, only the females produce enough venom to be dangerous. Most bites do not contain enough venom to be lethal, but some bites can induce a temporary condition called latrodectism. Latrodectism usually begins within 8 hours of the bite and lasts for 3 to 6 days. Latrodectism begins with muscle spasms and cramps, and they begin at the site of the bite and gradually spread to the rest of the body, and this can cause very much pain. About 20 hours later, the muscle cramps and spasms stop, but are replaced by the opposite symptom of muscle paralysis. Muscle paralysis is particularly dangerous, especially if it occurs in muscles that control your heartbeat or your breathing. However, for most bites, the victim eventually recovers. Today I will be talking about how black widow spider venom interacts with the nervous system to cause muscle cramps and spasms, as well as the eventual paralysis. There are many components in black widow spider venom, but only one component affects humans. This component is a small peptide called alpha latrotoxin. Scientists have been able to visualize what alpha latrotoxin looks like under cryo-EM microscopes. What's particularly interesting about the shape of latrotoxin is that it likes to combine with other latrotoxin molecules to form a pore. You can see in the cryo-EM image and in the 3D reconstruction that the pore is made up of individual latrotoxin monomers. When a spider bites and injects its venom into a target, the latrotoxin pieces combine like puzzle pieces to form a pore made up of four latrotoxin molecules called a tetramer. This tetramer pore is a major contributor to the effects of latrotoxin on the nervous system. Before I discuss exactly how formation of this tetramer pore leads to muscle cramps as well as the eventual muscle paralysis, I'll first describe how the nervous system controls muscle movement. Initiation of muscle movement begins in the brain where a decision is made about which muscles to move. This information is relayed to motor neurons in the spine which have long axons that innervate specific muscles. The points where the axon terminals make contact with muscle fibers are called neuromuscular junctions. It is at these neuromuscular junctions that the nervous system is able to induce muscle contraction. At the neuromuscular junction, the axon terminal contains vesicle stores of the neurotransmitter acetylcholine. The muscle contains acetylcholine receptors that are capable of inducing muscle contraction if acetylcholine is released and binds to them. The gatekeeper that determines whether acetylcholine is released are voltage-gated calcium channels. These channels are proteins that sense electrical charge on the membrane and open if the cell is activated. Arrival of a positive charge on the axon terminal opens these channels. The open channel then allows calcium to enter the cell. Calcium is a key molecule in triggering the signaling cascade that leads to the release of neurotransmitter acetylcholine. Acetylcholine then binds to the acetylcholine receptors on the muscle, which then leads to muscle contraction. So how does the latrotoxin tetramer pore cause muscle contraction and eventually paralysis? Well, latrotoxin interacts with the nervous system at the level of the neuromuscular junction. First, the tetramer pore interacts with a protein on a membrane called latrophilin. This protein is found at the axon terminal and is normally involved with keeping the axon terminal in close contact with muscles. The tetramer pore uses this protein as an anchor to allow itself to become inserted into the membrane. As a result, the membrane now has a hole the size of the tetramer pore. This pore is large enough that calcium ions can pass through, bypassing the voltage-gated calcium channel and entering the terminal. This puts the terminal in a continually active state and the neuron will constantly release acetylcholine even though there are no signals from the brain telling the motor neuron to activate. As a result, acetylcholine is constantly released and will continually bind to acetylcholine receptors on muscles. This leads to a continuous contraction of the muscle, which is the reason for the initial cramps and spasms following the bite. However, since the cells have a finite amount of acetylcholine molecules, after some time, the constant release will eventually result in depletion of acetylcholine within the axon terminal. Once this happens, even though the terminal is filled with calcium, no more acetylcholine can be released, even when signal from the brain arrives to activate these neurons. This leads to muscle paralysis and will last as long as the latrotoxin tetramer pore remains in the membrane. In summary, Alpha latrotoxin is the component of black widow spider venom that can affect humans. When injected, four latrotoxin peptides come together to form a tetramer pore with a hole in the center big enough to allow calcium ions to pass through. 
Nitrotoxin binds to proteins at the axon terminal of the neuromuscular junction and becomes inserted into the membrane. This hole allows calcium to trigger constant acetylcholine release, leading to constant contraction that manifests as muscle cramps and muscle spasms. The constant release of acetylcholine eventually leads to acetylcholine depletion in the axon terminal, which prevents any muscle contraction from happening, which results in muscle paralysis. Thank you for watching. You can find links to the sources of all the information I used in this video in the description down below.